Welcome to Spirit of Truth Church for this sermon on Matthew 13, verses 51 through 53. And now let's open with the word of prayer. Lord, we praise your name. We thank you for your salvation. We thank you, God, that you are always with us. We thank you, Lord, that we can trust in your sovereignty in the midst of great turmoil. We pray, Lord, for those who are being persecuted, for the churches all across the world, God, who have members who are being actively persecuted. Lord, we thank you and we pray for their safety. We pray for their mission of evangelism and discipleship. Lord, we would ask for more opportunities for evangelism and discipleship here. Thank you, Lord, for everyone you bring into our path. We praise your name. Amen. And now let's move to the reading of the scripture. Matthew 13, 51 through 53. Have you understood all these things? Yes, they told him. And he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house, who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. When Jesus had finished these parables, he left there. Now I would like to argue that the main idea is as follows. In these verses, Jesus articulates the position of the disciples going forward into the up-and-coming church age. The disciples will act as scribes, teaching the church true authoritative doctrine. And now for the exegetical portion of the sermon. So starting out in verse 51, we have Jesus finishing the general parables of the kingdom, and he asks the disciples if they've understood what he told them. Now they respond affirmatively that they did. Now yet again, this is from their perspective. They were not fearful for asking for help, so we can assume that they did have a general understanding of these parables and that there was a meaning that was indeed communicated to them. Unfortunately, some scholars in the modern era argue that the meaning of some of these parables has been completely lost, or that the disciples didn't understand what they meant. But from these verses, we can tell that yes, indeed, Jesus did communicate something concrete and specific. Now, in verse 22, uh, D.A. Carson says that, quote, interpretations of this difficult verse are legion. End quote. So that's rough. Whenever you run into something like that in a commentary, you know you're in for some trouble. So let's try and figure out what's really going on with these verses. So it's interesting that some translations, the HCSB actually translates scribe as student of scripture, and specifically students of scripture. Now you can see where this would cause potentially an interpretive issue. A scribe is a very Jewish word. It's a position within the Jewish culture and within the Jewish uh, political religious body. Students of scripture could be anybody who studies scripture. And again, that doesn't have necessarily a Jewish flair to it. That could be anybody up and through the modern day. And why is this difficult? Because what this is going to say is that these are like people who bring out of their treasure what is new and what is old. There's an interesting aspect of this where people could claim to be a person who's trained for the kingdom of heaven. And, well, now you have to listen to what they say. So this can be a very difficult issue when determining who this is actually talking about. Now, there are three key features in this verse. First, there's the scribe who is, has become a disciple of the kingdom. Second, there's this image of the head of a household. And third, there's the image of the old and new things being brought from the treasury. Now, the most direct application, in other words, who's Jesus talking to here? The most direct application is not to all believers, but specifically to the disciples who are now to be teachers of others. The emphasis, again, is on the disciples fulfilling this role of the scribe or being scribes, the highest and most official teachers in the land. Now, again, other translations will say students of Scripture. It's technically accurate, but it can lead the lay person to a bad interpretation. The second question is this. Could this verse speak to the teaching office in the church? Well, I would argue that the language is very Jewish, and that the kingdom of heaven is very apocalyptic in its language, and that it is to the scribes to whom the divine mysteries are revealed. So I would argue that this is actually a limited understanding of the scribes and those who are disciples of the kingdom in the sense that they're the ones who are being trained, that this would refer to the disciples. Now, the household owner is to use his resources to provide for the household. 
So here we see what are these disciples supposed to do? Well, they're to use their resources for the body of the church. The disciples are going to provide their understanding for other kingdom citizens. Now, they're specifically called out to do two things. Bring out treasure from the treasure room, old and new. They're to bring out the old treasure, that is the revelation previously given, that is the Hebrew scriptures, and the new revelation for the benefit and growth of the kingdom citizen, that is that which they are, to, are going to receive, things that are going to become, for example, part of the apostolic teaching and what will later become the letters and the gospels. So there's this mixture of old and new divine revelation. So we're seeing this new scribal class as being given old and new revelation, old through the Old Testament and new being given directly. At this point, Jesus then leaves. Now, what's the main, what are the main expository themes here? Well, we see the authority of the apostles' teaching. Some major theme in scripture. So, for example, in Acts 2.42, it talks about the people being devoted to the apostles' teaching. These verses support this. Paul again certified his message with the leadership in Jerusalem. So even Paul recognized this apostolic teaching. And again, you see these disciples then acting as these scribes of the church, the ones who are the official teachers and interpreters of the law, and the ones from whom divine revelation is going to be, or to whom divine revelation is going to be given. Now, it is the teachings of the apostles that is captured in the majority of the New Testament. And there's a historical unity here. Uh, that the message of the disciples is the same, and, and Jay Warner Wallace has done a good job at this, but the message of the disciples is the same no matter where it goes, no matter if it comes through John or Peter or Luke, and no matter where it goes in the world, the core of the testimony about Jesus remains the same. Definitely, again, the core teachings about Jesus and also about the core doctrines. This teaching is also authoritative. There's got to be an authority in place. In the modern day, we would say our authority is Scripture. Why? Scripture is divine revelation that preserves the teachings of the apostles, the apostolic teaching. Now, there's dangers, however, with misusing this verse. If you try to make this about all believers, well, what about disagreements? The thing about the apostolic teaching is that it was a unified, cohesive body of doctrine and knowledge and divine revelation. There was no deviation in it. It led to, again, the formation of the New Testament canon. If you try to apply this now, what about disagreements? How are official teachers of and official scribes, even if we even have scribes, which we don't, it's a very Jewish term, officially over all of the church? You also have that issue. So again, this doesn't work. What about the old and new reference? Technically, everything now is old revelation, but they were called to bring out the old and the new at the time, which would be things that were just being given in divine revelation then. So that reference also doesn't work. Because again, it's not just a reference to the Old and New Testament. That wouldn't make sense. The New Testament hadn't been written yet. It's a reference to old divine revelation coming from the uh, prophets and the people of the Old Testament and new divine revelation that was going to be coming through them. So again, you get this issue where the old and the new doesn't really jive well if it's about the modern day. Unless you're trying to justify new divine revelation, in which case this is where you take it. And so, again, that can lead to a serious misinterpretation of the verse. Saying that these scribes are the people who are being trained in the kingdom of God essentially gives these people Jesus' direct confirmation, blessing and authority. And so you have this big issue where these people truly are the authoritative people in the church. Now, another big theme of these verses is that it talks about the necessity and legitimacy of both the Old and New Testament. The Old and the New definitely refers to these two periods of divine revelation. And one will not have a comprehensive understanding of the New Covenant outside of the Old Testament's presentation. So this is the interesting thing. In the whole covenantal dispensational debate, uh, covenantalists often say that dispensationalists invalidate the Old Testament. Dispensationalists often say that covenantalists actually exclude the majority of the details and realities of the Old Testament. And so, what's actually going on? Well, the reason why covenantalists, for example, would say that dispensationalists invalidate the Old Testament is because they reinterpret it all in light of the New Testament. And so, essentially, they just make the old look like the new. Whereas the dispensationalists would say that, well, the covenantalist has got an issue because they don't listen to actually what it teaches. If you actually dive into the Old Testament's teachings on the New Covenant, there's a ton of promises to national Israel, a ton of promises to the land, a ton of promises to uh, about salvation of the whole nation, all of these different things in addition to the salvation of the Gentiles. 
So it's interesting. You don't need to whitewash the entire Old Testament with the new. You can let it speak for itself, and you'll actually get a fuller and more robust picture of what's going on. Now, what about the Christocentric set? So Christ is the source of divine revelation. Here he's speaking. You are going to be scribes. You're going to be trained in the kingdom of heaven. Who's doing the training? He is. He is the source of divine revelation. He is the one who's doing the training. Christ is the one who trains the scribes in the kingdom of heaven. In other words, you're getting taught directly by God. And so this is another reason why it can't possibly be about people after this time, because the ones who are being trained, the students of the scripture, the ones who are being trained, are being trained by Jesus directly. They're being trained for the kingdom of heaven. And so these are people who, having been trained by Christ, are now the authoritative teachers for the church. Now, in terms of application, we can see the key one here is to hold the apostolic teaching. We're not to seek new theologies and new doctrines and new things. We're not to seek speculative theology. We're not to, to go out trying to tickle our ears with every, every new thing that comes along or, or feel-good theology or liberation theology or a theology that's more relevant for today. We're to hold to the apostles' teaching. We're to hold to what the initial, quote, scribes of the kingdom of heaven taught. We're not to seek these new doctrines. We're to recognize and engage with the apostles' teaching as it's been passed down through the generations. And so in conclusion, I would like to say this. As we disciple others, we are to hold to the apostolic doctrine and to scripture first and foremost. Additionally, we are to help disciple others in such a way as to help them resist false doctrines and teachings that are ever-present in our age. And now I'd like to close the word of prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for protecting us through scripture against the false doctrines of our age. We pray, Lord, that we will be able to disciple others and raise them up in the truth of Scripture. Lord, we thank you for all that you do. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us here at Spirit of Truth Church. I hope you have a wonderful day.